preseason is here and there are a ton of exciting new items and runes released. We are going to look at all the new items and runes and we'll cover any updated items with significant changes. If you don't see an updated item on the list, it's because there wasn't any big change in usage or in win rates. One thing to consider is that once preseason starts, the number of people applying falls way down, so we have less data than we would on a normal patch. Now, onto the items. Whoa, this item looks really familiar. Wait a minute, is that Kiana's music? Banging. I predict Axiom Arc will get the most complaints of any new item, because when someone is rolling you with it, this item makes it feel much worse. However, it's not actually overperforming in any way. On most of the primary users so far, there are better pickups as a second item, and this one slots in decently as a third item. For instance, on Nocturne you have a 3% higher win rate going Steric second instead of this item. We are seeing Vi building this some, which is probably unexpected, but just like Nocturne, it's better to build Steric second on her. Still, don't be surprised to see this item get more Reddit threads than anyone else because of the feels bad nature of losing to it. For the surprise user, I'll tell you a story. I've been talking with my duo partner about how I think it might be a legit amazing first item on Senna, and he's kind of been doubting it. We tested it today, and our playtest felt really good as a first item. Then I saw the data for Senna, and as a first item it has a 56% win rate, which is obscenely high for a first item. I immediately started doing the Captain Morgan pose on my chair when I told him. Get this item first on Senna, and use your ult around the map, and as long as you damage one person, you'll get an immediate 25% cooldown reduction, which is huge for such an impactful cross-map ult. We were getting to team fights where he was getting two per fight as early as 12 minutes, which seems unfair, probably because it is. Now on to lethal tempo. The worries about top lane Yone and Yasue, <laughs> Yasue <laughs> abusing this rune were way overblown. Both have slightly improved win rates with lethal tempo, but only pushed up to about 52% in the mid lane, which is still an improvement, but not giga broken like people were predicting. The best users are still ADCs with Kindred, Ash, Vayne, and Draven, all above 55% with smaller samples and the best melee users are Wukong and Trundle, around 54%. If you are tempted to play this on Senna, don't. I've seen a lot of Senna's trying it, and so far, it's very underwhelming in win rate. For our surprise user, this one has really almost no data on it, but I'm confident this could be an actual terror. Tempo, Taric, top. His ability cooldowns are lowered by his autos, and as long as he has mana, he's near impossible to duel in the top lane. Build tier early and get Frozen Gauntlet as a first item to keep Taric on top of the opposing laner, proccing Lethal Tempo, and getting a huge attack speed stack built up. Build Fimbo Winter next. Then you can do the boring thing and build Frozen Heart, or be a Mega Chad and build Axiom Arc. Taric has no abilities that benefit from lethality, but the ability haste is good, and he's the champion most gated in the game by his ultimate. If you can proc it multiple times in a team fight, you could possibly have two ults in one fight. Even if you don't go the Mega Chad build, I could see Tempo Taric top being a legit top lane threat. Now on the Crown of the Shattered Queen. Some people were calling it, but this item is doing a lot better on Kassadin than any of the long-range artillery champions the item appeared to be intended for. Kassadin has a solid 54.5% win rate with it. This item might be busted on Anivia as well. Right now it's sporting a 58% win rate on her, but it's not her most popular mythic yet. A lot of Anivia mains don't seem to know about it. Try it out and see. Two surprise users are Support Morgana and Brand. Both have a 57% win rate with this item, and it makes a lot of sense because they want to get in close and do damage and will also take a lot of damage. This lets them soak a lot of damage right when they engage and get their combo off. Neither are using this as their most popular item, but that could change soon. Now on to Shadow Flame, but this one's a little boring. Not a lot of people are building this one yet, but the two best are Talia and Lux, both as mid laners and bot laners. In general, this item isn't performing great as a second item outside of these two, so consider it more a third item for now. For a surprise user, there's not many here. AP Shaco is probably the most surprising, but this item has not been fully adopted yet. As an aside, have you guys noticed my cool progress bars on the right side? My animator is now telling me I can have any design I want, so I'm going to get real fancy here. Like, rich Indian guy impressing people fancy. Get that old busted avatar out of here? Let's get a new one. And now we'll do first strike. It looks like Riot erred on the side of keeping this undertuned. Right now, the four best champions with it are Vex, Lux, Victor, and Kha'Zix. The big issue is because you need to do a lot of damage very quickly without being hit, it's just not a very strong rune early. I would wager it becomes standard on the four people mentioned and possibly Lissandra without any further changes. This rune is an absolute bait on Karthus, even in the jungle, please do not run it. I know a lot of people were showing how much gold you can make with his R, but it never really made sense. If Dark Harvest gets you a kill where First Strike doesn't, that's worth more than just the gold you get. Getting a kill helps your teammates control waves, gets towers, and gives more assist gold. For the surprise user, and this one was really surprising, I can't explain it, but in a small sample size, 
Orn with first strike has a 60% win ratio. My guess is since Orn actually has a surprisingly bursty combo, you can play this into a melee versus melee matchup and proc it to accelerate his item builds. Now we move on to Winter's Approach, which transforms into Fimble Winter. This item was made for Taric. So many times on Taric, I've sat on an uncompleted tier and had nothing to do with it. And this absolutely helps with that or anyone else who built tier and couldn't finish it because they were a tank. By the way, my Norse friends tell me that the closer way to pronounce this would be Fimbal Venter. I also found out that Fimbal Venter is the three year long winter that heralds the coming of Ragnarok. Awesome. Unsurprisingly, this item is doing best on Taric, and it's also very good on Blitzcrank. It's doing well on some other supports like Alistar, but no better than other second item options. A real unusual user for this item is Cassidin. Right now, this item and Seraph's Embrace have almost identical win rates and are first and second most popular items that you can build on him. So it seems like currently you can build tier and then itemize more offensively or defensively with this one. One big surprise with this item is that it appears to be really quite good on Swain Bot. My duo partner and I have been testing it and we are having a ton of success on it. Expect a follow up video on that soon. And now we have Cosmic Drive. I wasn't going to cover this because it seems like no one has really broken it, but then I found out a very unusual build for it. As far as the usual users, the only outlier is Cassidin. He's having over a 60% win rate with it, but it's a very small usage rate. We'll monitor as more people try it out. The most unusual user for it right now is Udyr. Not many people have found out about it yet, but when you think about it, it gives him a lot of stats that he wants. HP, Ability Haste, AP for Phoenix Dance, and Move Speed. And when you get the new passive turned on, having permanent move speed in combat is really amazing for him. Right now, this has a 62% win rate on low volume, very low volume. Try it out with Udyr maxing Phoenix Dance and get this as your second item, it might be really busted. Next up is Demonic Embrace. I think we can confidently say that this item is overtuned. It's the best first item for Singed. It has a 57% win rate for him, which is like Lu Bu in Dynasty Warriors 2 overtuned. Tom Kench, Amumu, and Zack all have over a 60% win rate with it as a second item. The only person this is flopped on is Volibear. People were predicting this would be really strong on him, but so far it has barely a 50% win rate as his second item. For the surprise user, not a lot of data yet, but Malphite might be really good with this item. People aren't building it because you don't think of it as a Malphite item, but as your only offensive item in a tank build, it can be really strong. Moving on next to Evan Shroud. I like this item because it's the item that sounds like it most came from Lord of the Rings. Evan Shroud is doing much better than I expected. Most locket using supports are better off with Evan Shroud. I think part of the reason is that there is no active on this item. It just works. Whereas with locket, you can forget the active or use it poorly. The win rates are 3% better than locket on Leona, Alistar, and Blitz getting them up to about 54.5% win rate, which is apparently fine for Camille, but expect this item to get tuned back slightly unless that falls down some. One way they could tune it is that right now, if someone CCs you, they also take extra damage. Just getting rid of that ability and making it only apply when you CC them would probably lower the win rate some. For the surprise user, we have Quinn Support. If you watched Happy Chime Noise's excellent video on this really off-meta support, you might have been interested to see that she builds tank. Well, did you know that her E ability Vault actually applies a brief displacement on the unit that it's used on? That means she can activate Evan Shroud very safely. This is her best support item, 2.5% better than Locket. And finally, we move on to Glacial Augment. This one appears to be underperforming a bit. Lux support in mid has a really strong win rate with it at 55 and 56% respectively. It's Nico's best rune at 53%. Other than that, it's not really outperforming anyone else's standard runes. I've been playing with it a bit and it feels situationally very strong and it's stronger late game where the ice rays can be really helpful in team fights. But in lane, you probably gave up guardian for this, which means you lose the shield in combat and are a lot weaker personally. This is probably why Lux is doing so well with it because she doesn't go into danger as much as someone like Braum or Rakan who gave up their guardian shields for this, which means they will die more often. If you are one of these traditional guardian supports, consider giving Glacial Augment the cold shoulder for the moment. Our surprise user is Jarvan the fourth. Right now, it has a really low play rate, but this is promising. Since so much of J4's power is in gank setup and is solid CC, this ability will let the laner that you are ganking for get into position and take less damage back. Test it out and see what you think. If you enjoyed drilling down and learning what items and runes are doing the best, please consider subscribing. In the future, I'll be doing my best Slim Jesus roleplay, and from time to time, we'll be drilling down in the data to help you guys win more games. See you on the next one.